Yeah, man. Chal, let's begin. So as uh, you know, we are going to talk about statistics today. So we'll again go by our usual discussion on the weightage. So how much is the weightage for statistics? We have how much? Eleven. Statistics and probability to, together has a weightage of eleven. So the the proportion of statistics vis-a-vis -vis probability would be around six is to five uh, or seven is to four which you know uh, mostly like that six is to five seven is to four so in total 11 11 marks question from statistics and probability so what is removed so this is removed step deviation method for finding the mean has been taken away so you don't need to go by go for that method. So there will not be any questions as such on step deviation method and cumulative frequency graph has been removed. So hence more than less than frequency cumulative uh, uh, cumulative frequency graphs have been removed. So you don't need to find out the mean earlier the questions typically one question of four marks that is or towards the end one question will be on um finding the cumulative frequency graph and then from there finding out the median that's that was one of the uh, you know very typical question every every year every board year you'll see one question on that so that has been taken away never mind so now after that what's next so again this has been now so many time, done so many times that we don't need to repeat it but every slide as uh, you will see. I, I hope everybody is downloading or at least keeping it with you, those slides which you are discussing. These slides will be helpful. Uh, even if no rush, if you have not done it, no worries. You can done it, do it later as well. But these slides uh, might help you, you know, flip through the entire chapter in a short span of time later when you are revising again for the boards. Okay, my dear. So let's go to the... So this is what is our you know, topic which we are going to discuss. Okay, so what is this measure of central tendencies? Central tendencies measure are, you know, three ways we are measuring mean, median, and mode. You know the definitions. So we will first go through the uh, formula for all of that, and then we will solve previous year board papers. Okay, so what is central tendency? So, you know, in statistics, we do what? We have a lot of data collected. Now, once data is collected, we want to analyze that data, what message or information those data points are giving to you. So for that, we have a few, uh, few techniques or few methods to analyze the data. So there are two very famous or very popular or very useful. And one is to find out the central tendency wherein we are trying, trying to get, let's say if I have to replace the entire set of data with one point, what would be that point? So one, one data point. So that is what is we call a central tendency. And the other is the expanse, the range. So from what is the minimum to what is the maximum? So how widely the data is varying. So these two information are vital for us to uh, analyze the situation. And uh, then, you know, uh, this particular um, analysis helps in decision making later on. So for example, right now, when you would have seen, you know, the last year, unfortunately, there were lots of COVID data which was coming in, right? So age-wise, geography-wise, city-wise, and all of that data is there. So we usually tend to analyze that and basis that, uh, you know, uh, we would do or we would take any call precautionary measure, whether there has to be some lockdown or no lockdown or let's say some, you know, uh, some other measures have to be taken. So everything is driven, driven by data. So hence... Uh, in your 10th grade, we are discussing three primary uh, mechanisms of finding the central tendency. And that's mean, median, and mode. So we, you would have already gone through in your school and our classes. So we'll again, you know, touch base uh, with all of these one by one. So what is this mean, median, and mode? Okay, so let's go to mean. So how do we calculate mean? So what is mean for that matter? So in your childhood times, you'd have anyways uh, done this where, just a minute, let me change the color pointer. Right, so where, uh, what do you do, used to do? You used to add all of the data points which are there and then find out the sum. Sum and then divide by the number of uh, data points you had. So that was mean. If you remember, uh, we studied mean in arithmetic progression as well. As well. 
So arithmetic mean of two numbers a and b is nothing but a plus b divided by two. So if there are more than two numbers, then how do I find out mean or average? So average is nothing but sum all and then divide by the number of it. So then you get some figure which represents all the figures, isn't it? So that's what was the purpose of mean. So three, three, seven. Uh, so anyways, so uh, uh, what I was saying is, yeah, so three, seven, nine, and whatever. So let's say 11 and 13. And let's say there are five numbers. So you used to sum all and divide by five, right? So this is, this will give you the mean part, mean. Now, uh, what we are going to do, uh, this you already did, I think in grade nine. Now, uh, here uh, we are not doing mean of discrete data. So you don't have data some, is something like, you know, five, nine, 21, 23, no. So for example, discrete data example would be, let's say on a daily basis, you are logging the temperature or rainfall. Let's say Bangalore on 1st Jan, 1st Jan, you are having, let's say, uh, 20 centimeter of rainfall. And 2nd Jan, let's say you have 5 centimeter of rainfall, like that. Okay. So all this, there are multiple such data, your data points, your 3rd Jan, you are, you are getting, let's say, 0 centimeter of rainfall. So the average will be nothing but 20 plus 5 plus 0 by 3. This is one type of, you know, so this is not grouped data. This is discrete data every every day there is one data point you add all of them and sum it to get zero uh, sum it and then divide by number of data points like that okay okay press alt yeah so now let us say uh, what are we going to do in this grade we are going to take grouped data so for example uh, the same data point same data can be arranged like this so for example how many days bangalore received rainfall from 0 to 5 cm let's say you will get uh, 5 days like that and how many days you got 5 to 10 cm so you will say let's say 3 days and now how many days you got from 10 to 15 you will say let's say 14 days like that so with this uh, small example you can clearly say that uh, Bangalore receives a fairly reasonable amount of uh, rainfall. So 10 to 15, most number of, uh, 10 to 15 centimeter, most number of days, right? So uh, Bangalore receives good amount of rainfall. Now this is called grouped data where you know this is a class, zero to five is a class. This is called lower class, this is limit, lower limit, lower limit, and this is upper limit, you know all that. Lower class limit, upper class limit. So this is class and the width, class width or class size, is nothing but five minus zero. So when you do this part, this is called class size. Okay, so in this case, our class size is uniform, right? Everywhere, zero, five, five, 10, 10, 15. Only thing to be taken care of here is the upper limit is not inclusive. So it's not included. So let's say if Bangalore receives five centimeter of rainfall someday, then that will be counted in the second item, second line. Right, so you know all of this. Everyone is aware of this particular thing. Where how to find out class, uh, how to uh, let's say what is the class size, lower limit, upper limit, exclusive, inclusive. Right, there could be exclusive, there could be inclusive class also. So inclusive class is somewhere like one to five. If I say one to five, and then I say six to ten, then I say let's say eleven to fifteen. This is uh, inclusive. Inclusive meaning this five is in this class only okay and then 6 is in this class 10 is in this class 11 and 15 both both limits are included in that class only so that's called inclusive right so there could be data on of both types so you have to be a little careful about that now how do we calculate mean of grouped data so you understand how to group the data so we have clubbed them together so instead of why do we group them for that matter so let's say one is we don't need that much precision every single data uh, rainfall data is not let's say important i just want to see you know uh, it's like grading of rainfall so for example it's like grading of a particular fruit let's say you have uh, pomegranate or yeah easier to read and interpret but we don't need that much info that you know information so if let's say if you uh, tell me that you know uh, uh, i don't really want the exact gram value of a fruit, let's say a banana or a mango, even if it's between 100 and 150 grams, it's fine with me. So hence that is called grading. So 
there are grading of uh, those those mangoes. So less than 150 gram is one grade, 150 to 200 gram may be another grade and things like that. So I'm not interested in an individual value. I'm interested only on the range. Where do they lie? That's it. Okay. Okay, folks, let's move ahead. So there are three methods which have been discussed in your grade, direct method, assumed mean method, and step deviation method. But as you know, step deviation method has been removed from 2021 board syllabus. So this part, we are not going to discuss. We are going to discuss these two. Okay, let's begin. Now, very easy. We uh, What is direct method? Direct method is nothing but uh, the formula is this. I hope everybody understands this formula. Summation fi xi divided by summation fi. Anyone has any issues in this uh, in this formula? Then please do let me know. Okay. Never mind. So now, yeah. So let's carry on. So now tell me, uh, this formula is okay with everyone. So what do you need to do? What is x bar? So you know the mean is given by this x bar. What is x bar? F1, x1 plus F2, x2 plus Fn, xn, like that. You have to add all and divide by sum of all the frequencies. So we'll take an example and understand. But tell me, is this formula clear to everyone? Anyone has any difficulty in this formula? Tell me quick. Yep, please. Formula. Any, any issues in understanding the formula? So we'll take an example that will make it much easier. So, uh, you know, so basically every class what is x1, x2, x3 and all that? So first of all, there has been questions like find the class mark. Now in a group data, first thing is you have to find out the class mark. Okay. So what is class mark? For example, in our previous case, if you see 0 to 5 and uh, 5 to 10, this is uh, inclusive data. Uh, sorry, this is what, uh, this is exclusive data. So hence this is exclusive grouping for that matter and 15 to 20. So what are the class marks? Class marks will be 2.5, the mid value. So add these two and divide by two. Similarly here, this will be 7.5. This will be, this is nothing but my X I. Okay. So this is nothing but my X I. This is 12.5 and this is 17.5 and like that. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that two and a half represents the entire class, whether it is one, whether it is four, whether it is three, whether it is 2.7, it is 2.9, whatever number between zero to five, if it is, it will be represented by one number called 7.5, okay, or 2.5 rather. And same here. Yes, so this is class mark, 2.5, 7.5, 12.5. Every class will have different, different class mark, okay? And that's how uh, you will find out your X, I's. Any doubt in that? Okay, so once you are done, once X i's are known, then there in the table, there will be the frequency. That means how many times did you find rainfall between zero to five centimeter in Bangalore? And let's say the number is 25 or you know, 25, right? So 25 is the frequency. So we write another table F i. We will, we will do this in the next uh, question that will make it much easier. So remember the formula, what is it? Summation F i X i divided by summation F i. This is how we will pronounce it. Okay, next. Yeah, so let's let's do this. So I've taken this question from your book. Uh -huh. Yeah, so let's do this uh, question, all right? So how to, first of all, I can show you, this is the table. This is the table which is there. So what is this? If you see, uh, you know, class interval 0 to 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50. This is the classes. These are the classes and the frequency is 8, 12, 10, 11, 9. So what do we do? So first of all, find out the class mark. In this case, what is the class mark 5? So uh, 10 and 20, 15. So 20 plus 30 by 2 is 25, then 35 and then 45. Okay. And these are the frequencies, individual frequencies. That means there were eight cases where the value was between 0 to 10. There were 12 cases where the values will were between 10 to 20. So, it, so hence 15 is the representative of all the values between 10 and 20. And why do we do that? Because since, you know, one, we do not need that much of, you know, deeper detail that whether it was, you know, uh, uh, all the numbers were around 10 or all the numbers were around 20. So I don't require that much. So a sense of, you know, uh, uh, the spread, uh, the number is good enough. So 15 is representing entire 10 to 20 class. Okay. So if I have to choose one value, which will represent all the values between 10 and 20, 
and that number is 15. So in a way, mean of mean we are doing. Okay. So right, 15 is there, 25, 35. Then what do we do? You multiply each class mark with the frequency, respective frequency. So hence, here is where lots of mistakes will happen. Calculation errors will take place. And you have to just be careful about that. So this is there. Then sum all. So that is what is called summation fi xi. And sum all the frequencies also divide it, you get the mean, right? So this is the process. Okay. Now, next process is assumed mean method. So let me just explain through the example that will make much more sense. So what will you do? What is assumed mean and why do we use it? So assumed mean, as you can see, use when the numerical values of xi, the numbers which you are, you know, uh, the variables which are there and their frequency, if you product them, it's too high. The, the product, uh, the calculation is very big multiplication thing. For example, let's say uh, you are doing a 10 year day wise, uh, you know, 10 year day wise rainfall of Bangalore. So let's say day one is, uh, you know, uh, mm, or like, like that, let's say if you have zero to five centimeter rainfall and you have uh, 400 days for this and uh, five to 10, I'm giving a very small example. There could be many bigger examples like that also. So let's say 746 days, something like that. Then 10 to 15, let's say you have uh, 2,142 days in the last, let's say 10 years or, or last 20 years, something like that you're doing. And then lot, you know, so huge numbers will be there. So when you create the table, what will happen? The class marks will be 0, 2.5, then uh, 7.5, and then 12.5, and then multiplied by all these frequencies. So 400, 746, and 2142. Now multiplication will become a big challenge. Okay. So hence, what do we do? We assume some mean. So, you know, either you assume one of them as uh, the mean and do the calculations. And how, how are the calculations done? It's very easy. We'll explain that. So that your now uh, multiplication, uh, this thing load becomes less. Now, today is the world of computers and calculators. Earlier, it was not there. So hence it was, it, it used to make more sense when there was no calculation techniques, you know, automatic error-free uh, calculation techniques were there. But today we have these uh, machines available. So we actually, if you see, uh, we do not have that relevance of these methods, but at least, you know, for mathematical purposes, we definitely require them. Okay. Now, so let's take this example. And, uh, what is this example again? Why is this chat not visible guys? Eight minute. Just a minute. I'm stopping the share and then resharing because the chat is somewhat not visible. Yeah, now it makes sense, yes, good. Okay, now, uh, so we were doing this, yes. So let's see how the assumed mean method is done. So what are this class interval is given? Now class interval is given and frequencies are given 18, 21, these are the frequencies. So what you need to do is in any of these variable class intervals, first find out the class marks, so let's say 51, 53. So you can, you can see upper limit plus lower limit divided by two. Everything remains the same till this point. Then what do we do? We, any of the X you assumed as you, you take as a assumed mean. It's not necessary that you have to take one of them only. You can take any other value also, which you think is more, you know, uh, beneficial. So you can take, but uh, taking one of them reduces one calculation. Why? Because it will be reduced to zero and you don't need to multiply further. So, but it's not necessary that the assumed mean has to be uh, one of the class marks. You can take anything, but yes, it has to be reasonable, which reduces your load. Just do not take any assumed mean. Let's say in this case, there was, there is no point taking assumed mean to be 80 because obviously 80 is nowhere closer to the mean in this range of data. And anyways, if you take 80, the calculations are not going to be reduced uh, uh, much right? because if you do one of the steps where you have to subtract. So for example, when you are finding the deviations X I minus a, and let's say you, your assumed mean is hundred for your calculation sake, but X I is 51. So 51 minus hundred is minus 49. So it's as good or as bad as the number previous number. So hence you are not going to, going to get any benefit. So what do we do? We take somewhere middle value and assume it to be mean. And then 
Then do the next, find out the deviation. So what is the deviation? Deviation is xi minus a. So xi minus a, so here 51 minus 57. So obviously this number is much reduced and multiplying with minus six is much better than multiplying by 51. So hence, if you have to do manual calculations, it made so much of sense that, you know, instead of multiplying 51 to 18, if I multiply minus six to 18, it's much easier calculation. And obviously, if it is easier, relatively lesser intensity, so errors will also be lesser. So hence, imagine some 50 years back, there was no calculator computer, or even if it was there, it was not that ubiquitous, not everyone could afford it. Then it was very difficult, you know, in, in let's say, if you're in an insurance company or anywhere where there is a calculations required, where you are calculating the mean, it would be so tedious job. And here, how many line items can you see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only seven entries are there. Imagine if there are 1000 entries and you have to calculate the mean, it would be a nightmare for someone who's doing it. So hence people have found out uh, some kind of smart ways of reducing the calculation load. So once the DIs are calculated, okay? So DIs are minus six, minus four, minus two, zero, two, four, six. Here, please take care of the signs because we usually tend to subtract the other way around. So that should not happen. And now you can go for di times fi. So every time frequency has to be multiplied. So it will get you minus 108, minus 84, so on and so forth. Now you add all of them. And the best part is when you add all these fi di's, the number is going to be very, very small because of this minus plus effect. Something will be canceled, right? So this is the total sum, summation fi di. And uh, this is summation fi. So the only differentiation in the, so what was the assumed or standard way, direct method X, this is summation F I X I divided by summation, sorry, F I. And it is assumed that it is going from one to N. I is going from one to N. This was direct method. What is assumed main method? So here, the only difference will be this A will be added to the same setup, but xi will be removed or replaced by di. That's it. The only difference is the this. So first write the same setup formula, replacing xi by di, and then simply add a. So we are not going into the derivation of it uh, because uh, I have not seen, but if anyone wants it, I can derive for you. But otherwise there is no question as, as such related to uh, establish this result. How? Do you know how is this, how is, how is this derived? It's very simple actually. Guys, derivation, anyone know, needs help? Otherwise, so far, so good, guys. Yep, yeah. where are you all? So silent. On Sankranti day, we usually, I don't know if you fly kites and all. Aditya, you don't know? So wait, I will I will show you how to derive this. Uh, so how to derive? Never mind. I will show you how to derive it also. So how to derive this? What is the formula? Formula is X bar is equal to A plus X plus, what is that summation? X, sorry, F I D I divided by summation F I. No worries, I will explain, no worries. Now, so uh, my dear friend, what is D I? D I is X I minus A. Is it? This is my di. Okay. Now, summation. Uh, sorry, for that matter, fi di will be how much? Fi xi minus a. Yes. Right. Now, summation fi di. So, if you add all of them, it will be summation fi into xi minus a. Is it simple? Both sides adding. I hope this is clear so far. So now, and I'm just not putting the limit. So it is assumed that it is going from one to N, one to N. Okay. So what will happen? So if you see this, this is summation FI DI. I'm just not writing the one to N part. This is summation FI XI minus summation A times FI. Okay. Is that okay? And I'm just not writing the limits above. Okay. Now, constant 
inside a summation in that case you have you can take the constant out what do i mean so if this is summation afi what does this mean this means nothing but af1 plus af2 plus af3 and so on and so forth afn so a can be taken out and f1 plus f2 plus so on and so forth fn so it is simply a summation fi is it so a can be brought out okay so hence here summation fi di is equal to summation fi xi minus a summation a times summation fi is it now my dear friends divide the entire equation by summation fi di divide by summation fi divide the entire equation by this so it will be summation fi xi divided by summation fi minus a and that that completes the proof isn't it that completes the proof why because now you can write summation fi xi divided by summation fi is equal to a plus summation fi di divided by summation fi okay so this is what by direct method this was our x bar right mean and this is a plus this is simply summation fi di so instead of x i is now i have di is here divided by summation fi this is the formula for assumed mean method so whatever is the assumed mean and uh, you can find out the mean of the entire group data hope it is clear now let's move forward okay so when what happens if there is an inclusive series so you have to be a little careful so this is a inclusive series where you can see uh, 29 is inclusive right and the upper limits are included in the in the in the class itself so hence what do you need to do you have to find the midpoint of 29 and 30 so this and this find the midpoint so 29.5 so hence yes so how to make it exclusive so hence half here half there so you add half to 29 reduce half from 30 and you will start getting all these series so 30.5 30 like that 35.5 39.5 40.5 44.5 like that so you can see how yes so 0.5 to be added or not will depend on what kind of uh you know you have these things you have uh, the classes you have so how much you have to add or subtract okay so depends on that yes so 0.5 and plus 0.5 will help in most wherever there is a gap of 1 okay so you can see there is a gap of 1 so simply add half of half, half both sides gap of 1 gap of 1 okay my dear friends clear to everyone any doubt so far how to convert an inclusive series into a exclusive series and then the rest of the process stays the same okay okay clear right now let's come to median so mean will give you one 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 observation but median gives you another centrality of the data so median what is median median is the mid value so you would have done in ninth grade ninth grade where you had discrete data you you arrange them in a ascending order or a descending order yes i can go back for a second wait someone is asking to go back wait a minute yeah yes clear can we proceed yeah now so median of group data what is median you have studied in the previous grade what is median median is the mid value right mid value of uh, something for example uh, in in case of age ages it works uh, you know very effectively let's say let's change it for only three three classes three class intervals then it will become much easier then you will be able to you know understand this properly let's say let's take a random thing so let's say we have 10 to 20 wait let let me let me show you so let's say this is 5 20 to 30 let's say this is 7 and 30 to 40 let's say we have 3 so 12 plus 3 15 is that fine there are total 15 15 items are there okay now so where do you think the median will be so there are 15 items 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45
15 items are there. Where will be the median? Which number is the median? Eighth number is the median. Yes. Yes or no? Eighth number is median. So where will the eighth number be? Five numbers, top five are here, gone. So eighth number is not there. Certainly eighth number is here. Yes or no? Eighth number will be between 20 and 30. Do you agree? Why? Because this is five and this is 12. Five plus 12, 12. So this is less than, so 12, eight is less than 12. So certainly eighth number is in this class. Where is that? And how do I calculate that? So don't you think eighth number is certainly greater than 20? Yes or no? It's more than 20, right? And less than 30 also. So more than 20, less than 30. How do I estimate where will it lie? So what I do is I take this gap of 20 minus 30. How much is the gap? 20, 30 minus 20, how much is the gap? 10. So what I do is I equally divide the eighth number. So eighth, eighth number is greater than or equal to 20. Yes. Greater than or equal to 20. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So now we will assume that between 20 to 30, the numbers are evenly distributed. Okay. Eight numbers are in. So now you will apply that AM wala rule in arithmetic progression, what we did. So the eight numbers are evenly distributed between 20, sorry, 10 numbers are evenly distributed between 20 and 30. What all would be 21. So first number. So this is, let's say sixth number, right? Oh, sorry. Sixth number is 20. Seventh number is 21. Eighth number is 22. Ninth, 23. 10th, 24. 11th, 25. 12th, 26. Like that. Do you understand? So now we are assuming the table to be like this. 13th, 27. 14th, um, uh, so I, I distributed between what? 20 and 30 like that. So yes, six, seventh, eight, nine, tenth, like that. 10 numbers or uh, no, I have to, hey, sorry, hey, there are only seven. Sorry, there are seven, no? Seven numbers have to be distributed between 20 and 30, right? So this is not the, now I hope you got this. What I'm saying is once again, so what my one thing is clear, what is that clear clarity? Clarity is it has to be more than 20, less than 30. Now between 20 and 30, there are seven numbers. There are seven numbers. Yes, so gap is 10 by seven, very good. Yep. Or, or each number is corresponding to seven by 10. Is that okay? So let's say there are seventh, seven numbers are there and I need to go to a third number. Do you guys get it? I, I need to go to third number in this gap, no? Why? Five are already taken. So I have to go to third number to this. I'll get the median. Third number. Third in this gap. Where seven, it, is, it has been divided into seven. Okay. So 10 has to be divided by seven. And into three will give me the, will give me the required number. And that you have to add it to 20. Yes or no? So 10 is the gap divided by seven and multiply by three. You will get the median. So what is all this 20? What is 10 H? What is seven F? What is three N by two minus CF? Yes or no? Three is eight minus five. Eight was what? N by two, right? Minus five. So I'm just taking N here. Uh, it will not be, uh, you know, 7.5, it will come 7.5 minus CF, but it's okay. We are trying to get on, you know, almost there. So I don't need exact values, but is that okay? Is this formula works now? So that is what I was trying to explain. So hence lower limit of that median class plus divide the entire H, divide the entire H by number of times the numbers were there. So seven here in this case, so H by F I divided. And then I took the difference between N by two minus the cumulative frequency of the previous class. So that is five here. So eight minus five is this. Now, is it clear why this formula comes? So this is nothing but, uh, you know, uh, linearization. So I've divided the entire 
class interval into uh, assumed values, and then I took the third value, third assumed value from there, right? Which was required here in this case. Understood? Clear? Any doubt? So never forget median ka formula. What median class the a lower value plus h the class size divided by the frequency of the median class into n by two. The median, if it would have been a discrete data set, minus cumulative frequency of the previous class. Okay, this is what is the explanation to this formula. Anyway, so you know all this. We spent a lot of time explaining this. And again, if it is a inclusive series, so please be a little careful while doing the frequency table. Now, these are the questions which will be asked. We'll solve this in terms of missing frequency. So basically, nothing but linear equation used in statistics. Find missing frequency, like that. We'll solve some issue, some 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 problems later here. Now, finally, the mode. So the mode is again, as Arun was mentioning, how many you know the 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 number or the variable which is appearing the most number of time is called the mode. What is mode? Value of variate which occurs most often. So example of that vaccine will be now implied or uh, you know applicable over here. Value of the observation having the maximum frequency. That value of the variable at which the concentration of data is maximum. So these are some definitions of mode. Modal class is that class. The class having maximum frequency is called the modal class, right? And how to calculate mode? Mode is given by x k, which is lower limit of the modal class interval. and again i will not i will give only hint how to get get this you know formula so you know this also formula can be again used or again explained by discretization so if you convert it into a discrete data set like what we did in the previous case you will be able to find this out so mode is equal to xk lower limit again so can you see the lower limit of the modal class interval so mode is going to be between that xk plus again h class size Into what is this? F k minus F k minus one divided by I typically write this as the 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 you know the the denominator I like I write like this F k minus F k minus one same as numerator. There is a reason why I'm writing this, and then minus F k plus one minus F k. Okay, so there are you can see why am I writing like this? So two f k you can see two f k is coming from here, and the other ones are negative. I am I am writing this for purpose. So again, if you if you look carefully, I am dividing. Uh, what all are these? F k minus f k minus one is frequency of the modal class minus frequency of the previous class, and I am subtracting something out of, from it. What is that? it is um or rather you can write the other way around also so let me rewrite this here so what i'm saying is let me explain so mode is xk again in this case l you can write l also xk lower limit of the modal class plus again h that h appears over there that means the class size now i am distributing this class size and then multiplying with something what is that in the previous case i was multiplying with n by 2 minus cf here i am multiplying with frequency of the modal class minus frequency of the previous class so i will get one value okay divided by so fk is going to be highest anyways right hence it is modal class and then plus fk minus fk plus 1 so as if fk is in the middle and you are subtracting the previous frequency and the succeeding frequencies and then adding both of them together in the denominator and multiplying this part only to uh to locate again so if you if you are able to relate it to the previous this thing so this is my n by 2 in the previous case this was cumulative frequency and here entire f the o, the in the previous case i had only f here if you re recall see i have written this formula here can you see h remains the same h remains the same n by 2 minus cf becomes fk minus fk minus 1 
and the lower f is nothing but the spread on both sides so right so fk minus fk minus 1 is on the left side and fk minus fk plus 1 is on the right side so what do we, what is left and right uh, what does it mean we'll show in an example so this is the formula for mode so the question will be direct you will be just given some data set and you have to find out the mode see so here here is the case 0 20 20 40 40 60 all that so xk so how do i find out the acha tell me one thing one basic question in this mode calculation can the denominator be zero what happens if the denominator becomes zero what happens if 2fk uh invalid what does it mean so 2fk minus fk minus 1 minus fk plus 1 becomes zero possible will that happen could be right yes or no what do you think can 2fk can the denominator be zero what if you let's say you are calculating you are getting denominator is equal to zero bolo do you understand this let's say in the exam you are calculating and twice fk minus fk minus 1 minus fk plus 1 will become zero possible not possible just say yes or no possible can it be possible yes or no can you get zero while calculating if the numbers are such yes no how many of you think yes you can get zero that uh, that's if fk is the i'm aditya what whatever it is i'm just asking can it be zero yes or no can the denominator be zero not possible not possible why 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 can't it be zero if the numbers are such then fk is the largest frequency value okay okay yes so fk is the so fk minus fk minus 1 and fk minus fk plus 1 both are greater than 0 in the denominator what we discussed hence if you see this part where have i done an error this is greater than 0 where are the this is also greater than 0 where have i done an error batao aditya both are greater than 0 if fk is less no fk cannot be less how can fk be less fk is the modal class he is saying oh okay okay no problem if fk cannot be less fk will be the highest value no fk cannot be if the fk is the first term then is fk minus 1 considered as zero so fk minus 1 is nothing there yes zero yes now you got it right so hence 2 fk is greater than so it will not be zero right fk minus fk minus 1 acha what if acha another another question another question what if let's say let's take an let's take this example what if if this was also 12 then which is the modal class this will not be asked in the exam but just asking if you see let's say both are 12 possible possible or not possible so which one is take which will which one will you take as the modal class Forty sixty. Why are in reason being? Why will be that taken as? So because you then, or uh, if there are equal values, then you also consider the values uh, before and after the modal class and find which one has greater value. No, didn't understand. Come again. So because there are two classes with. Which uh-huh. both qualify as more. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, you consider the values around that class also. So, like twenty to forty has eight, mm-hmm. and I mean, so around forty to sixty you have eight and twelve, mm-hmm. and around sixty to eighty you have twelve and six. So, forty to sixty has the greater like general overall value, sort of. Um. Okay, but you know there is a uh, data can have more than one mode. Okay. So that's called a bimodal. you know it, it can have multiple modes also okay so uh, in this case there can be two modes that's okay multimodal yes so there would there could be you know so unlike mean and median we can have more modes okay so something like that 
right? Multiple, uh, let's say most frequencies are, if you are plotting frequency here, your X i is here. So hence see, there are multiple modes of uh, this thing. Okay, so possible. So hence in that, it will not be there in your exam for sure. But just in case, if that is the case, that means there are two median, two, two values where the number of cases are more. Okay. So hence both are equally important for you from the analysis perspective. Understood. You can't ignore one. You can't ignore just one. No, no, no. This is yes. What uh, um, RN is saying since the neighborhood here is more than the neighborhood here. So hence the mode will be uh, somewhat aligned towards in this direction, skewed towards that direction. So I can understand what he's trying to say, but here we will, we cannot neglect both and we will have to take care of both of them. Okay. Anyway, so, you know, our, you are now familiar with this. There is one empirical tendency. This is not always true, but you can remember this two times median minus three times, uh, two times mean minus three times median plus one times mode is zero. And I have written in this fashion because many a times people get confused while remembering this code. So always remember mean, median, mode, and two minus three plus one. So, right. And two plus one minus three is anyway zero. So you remember like this twice mean minus thrice median plus mode is zero. So many a times this could be written as three median is equal to two mean plus one more for the same data, but it's not always true. But they will, you know, uh, for your purpose, there was a question last year where they have given mean, median, mode, sorry, median and mode, and you have to find out mean the other way around of the same data. Okay, so this was the theory part. So this is the question now, sample paper. So this is the data given, 100 meter race stopwatch was used to find the time that it took a group of students. Any questions so far, guys, please. Tell me anything which you want to again revisit. Uh, it's not always used. It's not always in certain cases are in, in certain cases, you can use it in, you know, in, in these where, uh, you know, the way data doesn't vary that much. There is not, uh, not no so many outliers and all that, then you can use this. Okay. So in, in, but before applying this data in your case, you can, you know, apply it. But uh, there, in you know, uh, there will be many cases where the variation in data is so high that it will not always be true. Okay, you can just you tweak with. Let's say you put uh, an extra additional outlier data. Outlier meaning total out of the way, right? It was. It is not supposed to be there in the first place, but it is there. Let's say there is one data which will totally deviate or change what. Let's say mode. Uh, uh, sorry, or mean. Let's say you are trying to find out some values which should be around ten. And all of a sudden you get a value 1.7 and all other values are 10.1, 10.2, 9.9, 9.99, like that you are getting data. And one value is totally taking it off always, you know, uh, and, and there is another value, which is 21.3, let's say total off. So in this case, so both are, both will balance the mean, but let's say there are a couple of such outliers in a set of thousand data and it's pulling the mean totally away from it. Then this equation might not be true, but they will be closer to zero for sure. Aryan, did I make myself clear? Is it clear to you? Aryan, hello. Am I, am I clear? See mean, median, mode for any data is, is some, is a, is a, what do you say? Is a manifestation of centrality of the data. In, in reality, they do not exist as a, for example, let's say, uh, when I am uh, counting the average number of children in a class in, let's say your school NPS, will it be an integer average number of children in all the classes put together? So what is the average class size? If I ask for NPS, will, will you come up with a number like exact 40 or 30 or 25? It cannot be right. It will be somewhere around 27.56, right? And, or, you know, something like that. So those, these numbers are not, you know, they do not actual, actually exist. So 27.56 is not the number of people in your classroom, but it gives you a, a sense of 
where it is. So it is very clear that it is not beyond 30. It is also very clear that it is not beyond 25. So it gives you a sense of measurement, but it's not exact value. So hence in a, in a case where we are dealing with now to, you might have heard of something called big data and all that. So much of data is getting generated. So, uh, you know, so uh, we, we are, we, our minds and we also don't know, need it. Don't need to go to each one of the data and, uh, you know, be very particular about it. So we are just a sense of it is good enough. So that's where we talk in terms of mean, medians and mode. Okay, so what is the first answer? 100 meter race stopwatch was used to find the time that it took a group of students to run 100 meters. Estimate the mean time taken by a student to finish the race. Mean time taken. What is the mean time taken? So you have to first class marks and yep. So 8 into 10. Uh, first of all, try to find out summation FI. So 8, 10, 18, 18 and 13, 31 and 6, 37 and 340. So total is 40. Okay, 40 students have run. So hence 8 into 10. So you calculated this 8 into 10 is 80. Then 10 into 30. Isn't it? Then 13 into 50. And then 6 into 70. And then 3 into 90 divided by 40. Could you do this or did you have some other shortcut method of finding it out? How quickly you have to do this only, right? So 800 plus 300, 1100, 1100 plus uh, 650. So 1750. So 1750 plus 420 plus 270. So this is a total 0, 7, 7, 14. 12 to 14, 1440 by 40. So it is, uh, you got the, did the second one, one, what was the first answer? A ka? 43. But I messed up with the calculation. Oh, two it is, sorry. Huh. Correct. 43, 17, 0, 0, 5, 2, 7, 7, 14, 1, 7, 8, 4, 12, 2, 14, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 4. Eh, I miss, missed up then. 80, 300, 1100, 650, 650, 420, and second one is 40. All right, first one only. I got stuck. Well, you guys are so fast. They go. I can't do like that now. So hence, 8 into 10 is 80 here. 10 into 30, 300 here. 13 into 50, 650 here. 6 into 70. 420 here and 3 into 90, 270 here. Correct. And divide by 40. Is it? Am I do I'm doing correctly or not? Oh, I did not add eight. Uh, oh, okay. Hmm. So uh, that was the mistake. So this is uh 380 and 380, 430, 1030, 1050, 1450, 1450, 1520, 1720. So 1720 upon 40. So not this one. So this is 4, 3. First one is 43. What will be the upper limit of the modal class? Modal class is this. So 60. Do you get the 60 part? Second is 60. Right. Then third one. Construction of cumulative frequency table is useful in determining the median. We we'll just discuss this. They should not have asked this question, but it is mean the sum of lower limits of median class and modal class. What is the median class here? Same as same as the modal class. Is it? How do I define the median class? N by two. So forty by two, twenty. So twenty is here. So you have to make the cumulative frequency chart. So in this case, 8, 18, 31, 37, and 40 will be. So I'm just doing it roughly, okay? So you don't do it, you know, because it's one marker. So hence, I'm not drawing the table. You should have ideally drawn the table. And then, right. So hence, median class will be 20. Why? Because, so 18 is 
done here. So 20 is less than 31 here. So hence, this is the median class. And the median class will have what? Same lower limit as this thing. So 40 plus 40, 80 is the right answer. How many students finish the race within one minute? This is what, very easy. So this is again a less than all thing. They should not have asked this, but then they are asking no worries. So you must be ready. You can see this is this is studied in, but anyways, you can, you know, um, uh, find out from the data. How many students finish the race within one minute? So within one minute is 13 plus 10 plus eight. These two people took more than 60 seconds. So hence this sum will be the final. So 31, very good. So you have to answer four out of five, not all. So if at all you have to leave one, which one would you would have left? You have to leave one, A, B, C, D, E. Which one will you leave? First one. A. Everyone will leave first one. Yes. Because, yes. Obviously, it is not worthy enough for one minute. And then there is a possibility of making errors also. So anyways, chalo. this is the second question, which is again, three marks in the same sample paper. Now, here is where we will create a table and do all. See, they, see this question is of missing frequencies. Right, so frequency missing. So first of all, class. So you have to do. Oh, oh. So let me give you how will you solve this. Median is given as sixteen. So you must remember the formula of median. Usually, I immediately write the formula of median. So median is equal to L plus H by F into N by two minus C F. This is my median. Now we have to create a table because A and B has to be found out. All of you also do, I will also do parallelly. So I will immediately make 0, 5, then 12, 5, 10. I will not draw lines and all because I do not have the features here. So you can draw the lines if you wish. In the exam, definitely make a proper table and be very, very careful while you are taking because if you miss any number and then gone, it's also good practice to match this, revisit the numbers. Okay, 35 to 40. Revisit the numbers. So 0, 5, 12, correct? 5, 10, A, 10, 15, 12, 15, B, 6, 6, 4. Now you will find out class mark XI. This is FI. So what is XI? 2.5, 5, 5 7.5. Now keep adding 5 to all it. 12.5, 17.5, 22.5, 27.5, 32 32.5, and 37.5. So XIs are done. Okay, now what? To calculate median, I have to first find out the cumulative frequency. So be very, very careful. So cumulative frequency. So 12. So keep adding 12 plus A. Then 12 plus A. And then again 12. So 24 plus A. Okay, then what? 15, 39 plus A. Then what? Um, 39 plus A plus B. Then 45 plus A plus B. Then 51 plus A plus B. And then 55 plus A plus B. Now be very, very careful while again, repeat 12 plus A. And then 12 again, so 24 plus A, 24 plus 39 plus A, 39 plus A plus B, 39, 6, 45, 45 plus 6, 51, 59. This is the thing, right? Now, my dear friend, how will you find out? Anyone done? Median is 16. Okay. So where is the median class? What is the median class, my dear friend? What is the median class in this? Can you can even tell me where is the median class? Which one is the median class? 15 to 20. Median is 16. What is the median? 16. Why Shreyas? Why it is 15 to 20? Shreyas, can you unmute and say? Or Aditya? Since median is 16, so hence. How do you find out? Where will the 16 lie? Uh, 15 to 20, since 16 is between 15 and 20. 15, oh no, my dear. 
are you have to check cumulative frequency no so checking this so since the median lies in the 15 to 20 class can't we say the median class is 15 to 20 median acha is given median of the following data is 16 yes 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 okay yeah median yes so what is the median class very good yes i was thinking of uh okay okay yes highest frequency yes in that case okay yes very true 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 sorry yeah 15 to 20 correct so say hence what is l 15 what is h 5 what is f 15 is it what is n by 2 that is not known that will be n by 2 is 55 plus a plus b by 2 what is cf 24 plus a yes or no are these data okay is this the, is this the data you are using now so now next how to do yes bolo so hence median is 16 so 16 is equal to l what is l 15 plus h h is 5 by f 15 into n by 2 minus cf so 55 plus a plus b by 2 and oh total is anyways given so we can directly write 70 so 55 plus a plus b is total of frequency is 70 so this is 70 so you can directly write 35 here so instead of this 70 by 2 35 minus cf minus cf cf is how much 24 plus a so minus 24 minus a okay so 16 minus 15 is 1 is equal to 1 upon 3 into 35 minus 24 is 11 minus a okay so 3 is equal to 11 minus a a is equal to 8 if a is equal to 8 then 55 plus a plus b is equal to 70 so 55 plus 8 Plus b is equal to seventy. So this implies b is equal to seven. Okay. So time consuming. Hence, most of them will be four marks and things like that. Chalo, good. Next, easy one. One marker. Find the mean of first n natural number. So mix of a p n this. Find n. So you know five first n natural number. What is the sum? So s n. n into this is the mean of first n uh, sorry this is n sum of n natural numbers so in this case s15 will be 15 into 16 by 2 right oh acha mean is given sorry my bad so mean is given as 15 so 15 is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2 by n Am I right? Sum of n natural number divided by n will give you fifteen. So n and n will go. So thirty is equal to n plus one. So n is twenty nine. You didn't understand. The question is find the mean of first n natural number. So one, two, three, four till n. You have to find out the average of it. Mean. How to find out average? So one plus two plus three plus four plus dot 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 plus n divided by n. Hmm? Sum of first n natural number is this divided by n. What is sum of first n natural number? You know this. So n by two. Use the formula of AP. What is the formula of AP? AP का formula sum sum of a n terms of AP is n by two into first term plus last term. is it so n is the number of terms into first term is 1 and last term is n so this is the formula for sum of n terms of an ap 
So n plus one. This is the sum, and then divide by n. And it is given that this is equal to fifteen. So find out n. N comes out to be twenty nine. Okay. Next. Find the mean of the following distribution. So first check. These are exclusive, so no problem. So draw the frequency table. So first of all, x i. So I'm just drawing here vertically. Uh, sorry, horizontally. You can do vertically as well. So this is four. This is six. 8 10 and 12 let you find out the mean mean two marks question mean now fi so you can use any of the methods because it's not mentioned go for direct method uh, fi is equal to, this is 5 10 10 7 8 you can go for assumed mean method also so xi fi Or you can take any other. Isko me, isko assume bin kar lo. So let us say this is A, right? So you find out DI. DI is four minus eight, minus four, minus two, or yeah, zero, two, four. Okay, and then multiply FI DI will be minus twenty, minus twenty. Zero fourteen thirty two. So summation F I D I is equal to minus forty and thirty two and fourteen forty six six only six. Right. So X bar mean will be A plus summation F I D I by cumulative frequency. So summation F I. So A is eight plus. Summation F I D I is six divided by total frequency. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty-five, twenty-five plus fifteen, forty. This one. So eight plus um, six by forty. So one point five, point one five. Two marks for this, but don't do like this. Please draw a vertical table separately. I am just for the positive time. I am doing like that. Okay. Next, find the mode of the following data. So hence, usually my practice is see. I was very poor at remembering formula. I don't know how you are. So hence, if if you don't understand, if I don't connect with the formula, I will totally forget it. So thankfully here I could derive that. So hence, my mode is x k plus h into two things were there. F k minus f k minus one. So difference of the frequencies divided by either you write in the typical way or I write like this, f k minus f of oh one. This is f k minus one plus f k minus f k plus one. So once I write the formula, then only I'll approach. Okay. So this was my style. You guys, if you are confident, you can just yeah. So first I I am very very clear what is being asked and what formula I have to apply because if I use the wrong formula, gone. Calculate all of you. So class frequency is again given you, and uh, so you have to find out the modal class first of all. So this happens to be a modal class, right? Modal class. So what is x k? Sixty. So I will write all the values also separately so that if I go wrong somewhere, still I can get some some marks here and there. If at all it is a quest of marks. So h is b class size. Twenty. F K. Frequency of the modal class twelve. F K minus one. Frequency of the previous class ten. F K plus one. Six. Write all. Done. Now formula. Apply. M is equal to careful calculation. Very important. Sixty plus H twenty into F K twelve minus F K minus one ten divided by twelve minus ten plus twelve minus six. That's it. So this is sixty plus twenty into two four zero divided by twelve minus ten is two and twelve minus six is six so eight. So this is sixty five. Two marks. Okay. 
this is how we'll solve so meet all questions of mean median mode done next median of the following data is again similar question missing frequency question this is four marks so this was asked along with another optional question which was related to ogive but now that's gone so hence maybe you will get a optional between find the mean median or find this missing frequency so in missing frequency a lot of work has to be done so hence it becomes so anyways so summation fy is given total frequency is 100 so see you can predict only the values have changed everything the question remains the same totally median is 525 so what is the median class first of all where is the median class this is the median class right so you now know l but anyways you have to create a table so let's not be lazy and do it so 0 to 100 and uh, i will then write the class marks just next to it instead of frequency so i write 50 here 100 to 150 sorry 100 to 200 it is so it is 150 this is my xi then 200 to 300 this is my 250 then 300 to 400 350 just check if all the data points are there many times something might be missing so keep a look keep an eye on that also so this is 450 then 400 to 500 then 500 to 600 this is 550 then 600 to 700 650 then 750 then 850 and then 950 right so you fill the fill rest of them okay now be very very careful so 2 and then 5 then x then 12 17 then 20 then y then 9 then 7 then 4 okay fair enough so what is the median median is l plus h by f into n by 2 minus cf so let's write all of these values l is 500 h is 100 okay and then h is 100 f f is how much 20 then n how much 100 and cf how much 17 done so this is 7 7 plus x nineteen plus x 36 plus x 56 plus x 56 plus x plus y in these questions half of the time is waste wasted on writing all these steps but then you can't avoid it 72 plus x plus y 76 plus x plus y okay yeah fair enough now median is given what is the value 525 so 525 is equal to l so 500 plus h 100 h 100 by f 20 into n by 2 50 minus cf 17 okay i hope i am doing the right calculation so 25 is equal to 100 by 20 is 5 into 50 minus 17 is 33 hey what what something is missing what did i miss n by 2 minus f What was f? The frequency will not be seventeen. Oh, seventeen plus x. Ah, I'm sorry. Thanks, thanks, thanks for correction. Seventeen minus x. Okay. Are we okay? Happy. So sorry. What is that? Not seventeen. Ah, uh, this will be thirty-six plus x. So. There was a error. Error. These are all errors. I'm. Old person will make more errors. 
unlike you so 14 minus x correct so be very very careful guys so so 14 5 by 33 and what no this will not be 33 33 is gone <clears throat> 14 minus x yeah so 5 5 is equal to 14 minus x so x barabar 9 correct and y so what is y so you can calculate y 17 plus x plus y is 100 so clearly x is 9 so 85 y 9 y is 50 oh Okay, yes, so that's done, actually. So this is all, find the class marks in simple, simple class marks. So do it 10 plus 25 by two, 35 by two, that is 17.5, am I right? Yeah. And this one, 35 plus 55 by two, so, 40, uh, 45. Right? Am I right? Class marks of 10 to 25 is 17 and a half. And 35 to 55 is 45. Clear, guys? This was asked in 1920, 8 mark. Okay. Bolo. All good. Any difficulty? Clear? So far, so good, guys. Next. Do it. Again, same, you know, you have to do same thing again and again. You'll get bored, but can't help. Maintain your calmness of your mind. So size of items is given in centimeters. Compute the mode. Mode. So again, as I told you, I will, for the first, I'll immediately write the formula and make sure that it's correct. So mode is equal to XK plus H into FK minus f k minus one divided by in your book it is two f k but i write i prefer to write because i can connect with it so hence i write like this two positive quantity f k plus sorry minus f k minus one that's it so now borrow value so what is the modal class so write down modal class 12 to 16. Correct. No? So now let's find out all the values. X, K, 12. This is the thing. Hmm? Then H, 4. Then F, K is equal to 17. F, K minus 1, 9. Fk plus 1, 12. Right? Then calculation. So m is equal to 12 plus 4 into 17 minus 9, that is 8, divided by 8 plus 5. Right? So this is 12 plus. Um, 32 by 13, right? Did you get this value guys? 13, so 12 plus 2 point chabis and 6 point 4, 5 to 80, 13, 5, 6 or 70, 2.46. So this is 14.46. Yep. How many of you are getting 14.46? Yeah. 14.46, correct. So this is again two mark mode. So again, we are going in the same thing, mean, median mode. Nothing great so far. Hmm. So I'm just solving in front of you so that even if you are not, you're taking time, don't worry. Again, see, every other board paper will have this missing frequency thingy. So only need to do cumulative frequency chart. So three 
it will so predictable. Three plus six nine, nine plus six fifteen. Oh, here the only one, only one frequency is missing. Okay, cool. So three nine fifteen. Oh, so total is not given. Hence, only one F is given. Okay, very good. So three plus nine. Plus fifteen. See here in the previous question they had given total frequency also summation F I was given here it is not given. It's not given. Hence they have reduced to only one variable. So you don't need to solve two variable equation. So three nine nine plus six fifteen fifteen plus thirteen twenty eight twenty eight plus F and then thirty three plus F and then thirty seven plus F. I am guessing F could be three. Looks like no. Maybe, sir. In one or two questions, I don't know, but I have seen more than one pair of correct answer when it comes to finding two missing frequency. Can you share that question? Yeah. What is the question? Ah, uh, okay. One two questions. Ah, uh, I have seen more than one pair of correct answers when it comes to finding two missing frequency. So if you are solving linear equation in two variables, then there cannot be. So basically, what are we solving? Linear equations at the end of the day. So if there are two variables, two equations, only one solution will be there. So if you come across anything, please share. Let me have a look. Okay. So okay. So what to do, do next? The mean of the oh, so mean, yar. देखो यही होता है problem. What is the problem? This question is not about median. It is about देखो. So hence, the moment you see. this thing people think about that it is median but thankfully read the question once again before attempting anything so good the frequency f is the class interval 9 21 is missing so some what is mean so you have to do you, this was useless actually see that that happens when you miss on the word so this was not needed but anyways chalo but we do uh, we saw it in the time so hence 11 13 so 12 So let us again make a table. So quickly make a table: twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. Okay, this is my xi. Then fi is three, six, nine, thirteen f. And what else? Uh, five, four. Then would you go for assumed mean? I would go definitely for assumed mean. So twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-four. Let us say this is assumed mean. So let's find out di minus six minus four minus two zero two. Yeah, na two four six. Now summation fi di. Find out the values, guys. Let's compare our notes. Six four is twenty-four. What is the value of this minus eighteen? Did you do it or not? Zero and two uh, f and twenty twenty four. Okay, so this twenty four and this twenty four is gonna go. So I'm, oh, sorry, let me not do here. So summation f i d i summation f i d i is how much? Twenty four and twenty four will go. So zero twenty and minus eighteen. Is minus two and minus eighteen. Minus twenty is left. Once again, so twenty-four, twenty-four goes. Twenty and minus eighteen is minus two. Minus two and minus eighteen is minus twenty plus two f. Right. Now what is mean? Mean is given to be equal to eighteen. So eighteen is equal to a. So our a was also eighteen. Minus twenty plus two f divided by. So. Divided by summation f i. So, oh, anyways, frequency was thirty seven plus f. So that was anyways needed. Yeah. So hence, oh, the eighteen eighteen cancel thirty seven plus f is not needed. So f is twenty by two ten. Did you get this? F is equal to ten, guys. How many if you got f equals to ten? Anyone got f equals to ten? Are are you solving? Hello, guys. Board, ah. मकर संक्रांति मोड 
Did you anyone solve f equals to ten? Are you getting f equals to ten? Guys, are you there or I'm disconnected? Hello, folks, you're there. You are still calculating. Others only, only Aditya is calculating. Aryan, you got f equals to ten. Hello, still doing? Why? Oh, Rishim, what happened? Calculation. Mm -hmm. So, what is the observation? Type of questions. One. What are the type typical questions you are going to get? See, I will. I will what is the arithmetic mean of first n natural numbers again? This is the same question. Here, using the empirical formula, one question was there in 1920. Yes, We're using the empirical formula, find the mode of a distribution whose mean is 8.32. It's called empirical. It's not theoretically derived. It's an observed value. Empirical means experimental. So experiments observed or whatever observations we have, could you go back? Yes, where? Here. Yep. Aditya, any question? Done. So what I'm saying is, hence it is, you know, to answer what Aryan asked. So it is one for few specific experiments we have seen this happening. But we don't have any proof. And understand empirical meaning derived from observations of experiments. Okay, so hence there is no theoretical background of that formula. If you ask me how to derive it, it will be difficult. But I, if I see the data, it makes sense. Arin. Yes, like empirical probability where we perform the experiments and basis the data, we come up with some conclusion. But you do not have any theoretical basis for that. Why it is be, why it is happening happening like that? Yes. So maybe there might be theoretical proof, which right now we do not know. Okay. So hence we say that we observed it, and hence we are saying the more and again it is true for a few of these things. So it is not uh, you know maybe there could be several cases where it is not true. So now apply it and find the value using the empirical formula. Find the mode of a distribution. So you know the um whose mean is 8.32 and the median is 8.05 so let's write the formula so two times median mean minus three times median plus one time mode is equal to zero so we have to find out the mode so what is mode guys mode will be simply three times median minus two times mean so three times median, median is 8.0 times 053 into 8.05 minus 8.32 into two. So 24.15 minus 16.64. Uh, Aryan, no, no, I'm saying yes, there is no no proof for the entire set of things, but for that particular, let's say you can't prove it theoretically for the type of data you are getting also. So let's say this particular cannot be used only in one case, right? This equation, there will be certain cases where it is applicable, Cer certain cases, then only you are using it, isn't it? But you cannot prove for those cases also how it is happening. Did you get the point? So let's say in one particular specific case, case A, here you can apply, let's say in, in such cases, these are the data, hence you can apply this rule. But for that set of data also, can you prove this uh, thing? That's what I'm saying. So hence it is called empirical where we do not have a theoretical uh, mechanism to prove it, but we have observed that happens. Okay. so. Is this the calculation? So what did you get? No, it's not only few observations. Yes. See, for example, uh, see everything evolves with time. So till uh, Einstein did not come, no one was ready to challenge Newton's Newtonian mechanics. 
but today we know that newtonian mechanics works but it works on under certain circumstances only right classical mechanics works but it works under certain this thing but the moment you get into a subatomic level it doesn't work so hence as you as science progresses we come to know oh this is this has a limitation but this works well within that particular set of constraints so hence right but you understand what i'm saying so that's where so we do not generalize for everything so newton's laws cannot explain the motion of an electron but it can certainly explain the motion of a rocket if it is not moving at a very high speed near to the speed of light so hence okay so this is the calculation finally so uh, what is the value 24 minus 16 oh so 1 4 and 7 uh am i right akshita is getting getting 7.51 it's not 4 or did i miss something 5 minus 4 is 1 and uh, so it was not 24.15 it is 24.15 is it what happened so 11 minus 6 is 5 oh dekho you know sad sad case ho gaya us to matlab i am tired <laughs> anyways thanks yeah so 51 so totally tired should not do late night work anyways that's not for you okay so fair enough guys um, there are lots of lots of questions which are similar typical 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 all are like that see all i have collated i had you know so now this is something see they have vertical tables and all that table is very important bhai make table this is ruled out these days um, this is not there in the syllabus anymore standard deviation so this was standard deviation but again you can see how tables have been put and a assumed mean has been highlighted and then all the calculations are done so you don't need to do this but for your own benefit if you think that okay um you're comfortable doing that so please do right like that and then uh, can you please share the attachment for yes i will definitely so class size is again this assumed mean written down here mean is this mean is 21 plus minus 46 into into 6 oh what happened yeah this one 21 minus 23 by 20 into 63 so like that every step has been mentioned see uh are we allowed to use step division because in many cases it is here i would not recommend are to be honest you never know yaar because that's not there how can you use that kind of a thing uh but you know so but i think they will not give you something which is so difficult to calculate so why take chances so uh, because the number of volume of papers is so high so many question papers are there it becomes difficult to you know because you know you understand how many papers will be corrected by the faculty members there every day so many so if they start using their discretion it becomes difficult to manage the show so ideally yes very much any method you want you can do and hence in the exams like olympiads and all there is no restriction on methods 